This video was brought to you by a better planner, Ken Power, Marcus Biel, Stormberg, and Biel Componente. Yo, what's up? We're now in front of the uh, gas station near my home, and we're gonna do 1,000 kilometer challenge with the Fat EQE. I've done Fat EQS. That was in winter. Now it's summer. So how fast will I do it? It's just a standard benchmark. This is a very uh, okay equipped EQE. It cost only 1.2 million nook. It's the poor man's Fat EQS, but we still have. The digital lights, ooh. And then, look at this, look at this. Oh yeah, welcome to my lounge. Look in the back, look in the back. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay, we charge the car to 100% and we're gonna start at 22.30, which is in one minute. So yeah, let's see then, how far can we drive? How fast will it be? I have um, estimated that um, let me see here. Let me see if my estimation is going to be good or not. I've estimated that it's going to take um, um, 10 hours and 15 minutes at that consumption with 231 watt hour per kilometer. Okay, let's do all the preparations and then off we go. Now it's speculative, speculative, speculative. <laughs> and uh, to my big surprise, even half an hour past midnight, it is semi crowded over here. See, there's a Norwegian and a Swede. Uh, maybe because uh, it's uh, summer holidays. So, yeah, I, I came here with 17%. I predicted I would come here with 14%, so that was close enough. And then we just have to top up a little bit until we can go to um, Vyrbike. But the thing to know about this car is that. It ramps up really, really slow. Wait, uh, is it cold gating? It's supposed to take 500 amp. Wait, did it not preheat the battery before arriving? No, no, but you see, it ramps up really slow. It's been ramping up for two minutes now. I think eventually we will see 500 amp. Yeah. Or will we? Uh, okay, but at least, usually what happens is that it cold gets on the first session, but then from here on, it should not cold get. But uh, you see that the voltage is quite low here, only 342 volt. Uh, so even at 500 amp, it won't hit the highest speeds, whatever. So uh, maybe I'll just charge to 50% and then I can arrive with 20% at the bike. We are now at Varberg, getting 173 kilowatt, 500 amp. This is the maximum for this car. Well, CCS2, uh, at least for most cars like this, except for Tesla. But you see that uh, we've been getting maximum speed now since we plugged in for five minutes. So it seems like there is a slight advantage. If we can, we should charge so we can arrive with 10-15%. Um, so we could just boom! And on the previous uh, charging session at Speculate, it's slightly cold gated. The live stream people told me, I was at the toilet, they told me that uh, we hit 500 amp only for a few seconds before it throttle. So yeah, now that the battery is warm, then we should not get any more cold gate. But okay, so uh, the next stop is going to be Helsingborg. But normally I will stop at Ionity Helsingborg, which is further than here. 150 kilometers to Attikulla. But now there is a Tesla supercharger. And as long as we are driving a 400 volt car, then we can actually use the supercharger. It's going to be shorter. And then yeah, so that's easier also to reach that one. So I'm not sure if I'll take that route here, or you can also exit in the pre uh, or earlier here and take this one. 
yeah, maybe I'll take this shorter one. And time-wise, I look at Google, it's about the same anyway. But at least this one here, if you take this, there's a little bit of back and forth skirmishing, and then back again, you have to keep your, uh, yeah, you have to take the right one. But we'll see. So, yeah, so far so good. And also, I look at the consumption for the last leg. Let me see. Uh, this is total consumption. Uh, but I also calculated that we have 2% underporting. So if we had to count to 980 kilometers, but this was the one from uh, Oslo, I'm uh, sorry, from Speckerud. So on the next leg, I will guess that the consumption will be as much as 320, maybe, maybe more, wait, wait, you see, maybe more. Yeah, maybe, maybe 330. Yeah, wild guess. Okay, but let me show you guys. Earlier, you know, I was showing you that the uh, Soko K, they were digging something. Well, turns out that Soko K, they want to put up their own chargers. We've seen this all over the place, actually all over Europe. And here we have. Um, oh, oh, cool, they also included some, some Chadamo. So this is uh, probably 300 kilo, yeah, 300 kilowatt. Like, like I showed you before, so okay, they seem to be happy with hyperchargers because with one unit you can share power or one car can get 300 kilowatt, for example, a Lotus Electra. Uh, and yeah, you can even charge a leaf here. You see, Mer, they have 50 kilowatt here. They are probably not investing too much. They don't care, really. It's just sitting here. <laughs> and then we have Ionti right here. And then we have Tesla Supercharger over there. And then we have truck chargers over there. So <laughs> this is a really nice place to stop at. Uh, and also we have Rose Garden, which is not open. <laughs> I just discovered Rose Garden not long time ago. It's a very nice... Uh, Asian place you can eat and also some buffet but also takeaway but okay so um, now I have to um, go to the restroom and then uh, prepare to leave soon because this car charges really fast and it doesn't just have a, a small peak you see here even at 37% we're taking 160 kilowatt this is a true German with nice and flat charging curve and you see when I'm on a long trip I always bring my storm bag bottle. This is into the bottle. And to make things extra cold longer, I put ice cubes in here. And then whatever drink I buy, like this one, wait, wait, you see it? I will just fill it in there as soon as possible. So it stays cold as long as possible. And then so I don't melt the, the, the ice. <laughs> okay. So every time I have a, a pee break and a charging break, I just refill my uh, drink bottle. And then actually, even for longer challenges that last for 12 hours or so, then uh, the drink stays cold. And even if I refill more drinks here, it stays cold through the challenge. I think it was only the, the leaf challenge where <laughs> things started getting a little bit warm-ish. But as long as I add cold drinks, then it stays cold here for many, many hours. <sighs> All right, according to my calculation, we need to spend 52%. So even 60% would have been enough. We are not 64. You see, we have nice and flat charging curve. So 20 minute charging stop. Ooh, okay. I think we're good to go. We should arrive with around 10, 12% then. We are now charging at the Tesla supercharger. Yeah, be careful about charging too much here because, you know, rumors say that if you're charging at the Tesla supercharger, eventually your car might get some panel gaps. <laughs> okay, but look here. Um, this is the last leg from Weilberg to Helsingborg. 344 watt hour per kilometer. Oh, shit. Well, after correction, I think it's around 340. I guess it was 330, so my prediction was not too far off. Okay, so um, yeah, I think we need to charge again to around uh, 65%. 
So all good. Let me show you outside, by the way. So it's a nice new location with plenty of chargers and they're open for the public. As long as you have CCS plug at least. Yeah, and we have these nice drive through stalls even. And I can show you the, the outside here. Look, look, wait, wait. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we have the step here, which is very nice if you have to put something on your roof, for example. Huh? Huh? And then, wait, there was supposed to be a Mercedes uh, logo there. Oh, maybe that only appears when you close the car. I mean, when, when the car is off. But right now, the car is on. I buckle up like this to keep the stuff running. Otherwise, it will shut down because this car is being stingy on the energy. <laughs> but okay, so we will just charge up here and then head back to Helsingborg. Hey, sorry, head back to Weinberg. That's the regular drill. Wait, no, 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 no. Okay, okay. Okay, no, no, wait. The car now wants to add the charging stop. What the heck, man? I don't want that. Okay, whatever. Wait, where happened? What? Where's the charging screen? There, there, there. Okay. Oh, yeah. Wow, look at that. Hmm? Every time now, we get 170 kilowatt. Yeah, once the battery heats up, then no coal gate here. And then also, no rapid gate here. Even when I have HVAC running. Huh? Huh? The Korean cars, they would rapid gate if you do this. Also, the MAB cars. We're getting close to uh, Varberg now, and uh, man, this car is just so nice and comfy. Just like an EQS. You know, right now when I'm sitting here, I, I can't really feel the difference, that much difference between the EQE and the EQS. It's nice and comfy, quiet, good ride, awesome Burmese stereo, plenty of space. What else can you ask for, right? Hmm? And also the auto steer, by the way, is so nice and smooth. It doesn't slow down in the curves. It stays centered. Even when it was raining heavily, it could still maintain the course without like, like some other cars would be like, ah, oh, too much rain, disengaged, ah, you know. So, man, all this stuff. And also, wait, I need to enable butt massage. I have a hotkey for it. Oh, yeah, Helga. Oh, massage my butt cheeks. Oh, damn. Man, this is why German electros, no, German electro autos are the best. We are now at Weibai getting 500 amp, 168 kilowatt. Oh, yeah. Fat e-tron go home. <laughs> I remember e-tron would peak at 169 kilowatt just for a split second. But here we can actually maintain 169. Ooh, look at that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then why do I keep mentioning e-tron? Because this car costs roughly the same as e-tron. 1.2 million nook. Okay, let me get out of here. Oh. Do I need to clean the windscreen? Yeah, I, I think I can. Yeah, yeah, let's clean the windscreen. And you see, I like this location. We have bucket there. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Wait, is it wet though? Oh, it's kind of dry, but okay, this will, this will do. A, B, C, yeah, always be cleaning. We are now at Hoogstorp. This is a, a little bailout point. So uh, yeah, a little timeout. We left the highway at 6.35 and we had 29% when we left the highway. So uh, I'm really tired. I will just uh, take a, wait, can we, can we sleep back here? 
Does it matter where we, where is that the charging spot? Okay, no, all right. So then I just park my car here and then we take a nap and then we calculate afterwards how long we stayed here and in, in case we need to top up or anything. So uh, I will just um, stop the car and then use the preheating, that should work. All right, it's now a little bit past the eight. So we had a one and a half hour nap. Oh yeah, okay. So we count that as one and a half. And then when it comes to uh, battery, we're still 29%. So we don't need to top up anything. Let's go. We are now at Ayonti Strömstad, the last charging stop. And this is where it gets a little bit different than before. Uh, what is not different is that uh, three of these uh, tritium chargers are still kaput. They even put cones on the kaput chargers so people don't waste time uh, trying to use them. Yeah, so <laughs> three out of six uh, chargers are down. Wait, did someone really back up into this charger? Seriously? The fuck, man? No wonder why it's kaput. Okay, anyway. Um, normally, I would have to do the whole convenient charge and stuff. Oh, look, oh, look at that, oh, look at that. Even after I've taken a nap, we still get maximum power. Oh, yeah, okay. At least the charging is quite uh, consistent here. But let me see. So, okay, if you look here, um, 852 kilometers. I have to go, uh, we have 2% under reporting. Wait. Man, the car keeps pl start playing music. No! Is it being a Korean car or what? Okay. But we have to go to uh, um, 980 kilometers. That means driving roughly 130 more kilometers. So you see, uh, if we navigate to Alna Center here near my home. Center. There. That should be 130 kilometers away. Let's go. Yeah, 139, close enough. So we just have to charge enough to get there. <laughs> and that would be, we were nine and a nine, a little bit before home. Yeah, let's hope that my nap didn't ruin everything because now it's almost nine in the morning. So all them left lane huggers, they will be out by now instead of if I came here seven in the morning, right? Uh, okay. So now we climb a little bit more before we go. Like, oh, look at the speed. Look at the speed, man. 168 kilowatt. Oh, game over. All right, we're ready for the countdown. This is a little bit weird because we are deeper into the city. We are almost in Oslo right now, but okay. A little bit late countdown. Okay, 99.2. Okay, 99.3. This is gonna take a while, man, because we drive so slow. 99.4. 99.5. Nine 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 six, come on, Mercedes. Nine 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 seven. Nine 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 eight, come on, free Deutschland. Nine 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 nine. Nine 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 nine. One thousand. Time ten eighteen. Because we had fifteen minute nap, that becomes ten. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Um, that means 10 hours and eight, uh, 10 hours and 10 minutes. But let's look at the dis uh, consumption here. 306 watt hour per kilometer before corrections. Wow, that was better than expected. And then the time was five minutes, five minutes faster than expected. Ooh, all right, all right, okay, okay. So now we just head back home and we are just five minutes away from home this time, not half an hour. Okay, we're back home now and uh, okay, so yeah, the time was 10 hours and 8 minutes, but you know, we arrived with 12% battery. And since this was the first time I did this new loop or whatever you call it, I actually miscalculated a bit. I forgot that at the very end, we will drive slower and we will have to charge less. Um, so, um, you know, it was just, we were just one minute too slow. If I charged one, two minutes less, uh, estimate a little bit better. We could have done it in 10.7, right? And that would be rounded down to 10.5. So when I asked the live stream, uh, would, how, what would, should we do? 10.10 or 10.5? Almost everyone, all the Germans, said 10.5, 10.5, 10.5, 10.5. So that's it. The dictator has spoken. We will set the time to 
I think that's the most fair thing because if I would redo this test again, I would be more ninja with calculating towards the last leg and we will probably end it 10-5. That's my, my, my best guess. So yeah, uh, and then how did this, uh, this car do it against other ones? Well, uh, versus the EQS SUV, that was done in winter. It was faster, but it has a bigger battery and it charges faster. So yeah, that makes sense. Also versus iX, uh, iX was slower now, but it was winter, it was cold. Uh, but the iX also charges faster. And then versus the Fat e-tron, Fat e-tron was slower. Think about this <laughs> and these cars i mentioned well most of them they are similar priced uh, and then uh, which one should i choose then if i would buy an suv well you see the this this eqe suv when i was driving i uh, feeling the the white steering wheel here the, the interior listening to the brewmaster the soundproofing the ride it was incredibly good i i felt like i was sitting in an eqs this is how crazy it is. You, know, you, don't, you, can, you don't have to pay extra for the EQS. You can just buy the poor man's EQS, buy the EQE instead. And also this EQE is roughly 250 kilograms lighter than the EQS and it feels less boat than the EQS. You have less space, yeah, but it's cheaper and you still get the luxury and the features here like butt massage and you know, boot master. You get all the good shit. Like right now, I don't know why I would buy, I would pay extra for the EQS except for when you just need the space, I guess. So I'm really, really impressed of how how good this EQE SUV is. It costs roughly 1.2 million nook. And then if I would put this one up against other competitors, for example, Fat e-tron, Q8 Fat e-tron, if you start specking it with goodies, like massage and shit, it will also be roughly the same price. I would not buy the, the, the Fat e-tron. It's just outdated design. It's thirsty. This one was remarkably efficient for its size. And the temperature we had uh, tonight and also some wet roads and rain and stuff i would not get the the e-tron outdated feels kind of cramped in the interior uh, you know uh it's a bit thirsty it doesn't charge that fast uh what about the uh, eqs suv yeah it's more expensive a little bit bigger more boat uh, i wouldn't buy it unless i really need the space and then what about uh, bmw ix well ix BMW, they're trying to make some kind of minimalistic design here with just those diamonds and very little buttons and, and stuff. But I feel like a BMW needs to be like a BMW, you know, like a BMW iX or, oh, sorry, the I, like iX3 or the i4. You know, that's that's the BMW I know. I used to own a 5 Series BMW, you know, just, just make it German, nice premium design. But the iX looks weird. It charges faster, yeah, and it's also efficient, yeah, but I would go for this one if I had to choose. But there is one challenger here, which is Lotus Elettre S. It costs 1.3 million, no, 1350. It's more expensive than this one, yeah, true, but the Lotus is then more nimble. It sits lower, it, you know, it's sportier, it's faster, it's also spacious, and it charges at 300 kilowatts. Yeah, so that's it. The Lotus trumps everything here. I would pay the extra money to get the Lotus and it has KEF reference sound system. The speaker, the subwoofer sounds incredibly good. It sounds even better than the Brewmaster. That's my claim. But this one is a good second. Yeah, at least. So I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.